friends. A very good evening to each one of you who have joined here. Uh, uh, let me suggest that while uh, you can remain, remain muted, but uh, uh, videos you can uh, uh, put it on because that, uh, you know, in, an, in a conversational format, I find it very useful that we are able to see. So whoever wants to uh, open the videos, please feel free. Uh, so to those of you who are uh, joining for the first session of leadership series, let me just say that this is uh, the seventh session, like we informed earlier. And uh, in these sessions, I've had the privilege of hosting people who have really made their mark, who have clearly stood out in their chosen vocations and whatever domains they have they have, uh, you know, chosen to pursue. So we've had distinguished leaders from Tata Group, uh, some of the outstanding leaders from Adit Villa Group. We have had two distinguished academics, the former director of IIM Ahmedabad, Professor Khandwala, um, Professor P.V. Rao, who laid the foundation of human resource development movement in the country. And uh, only uh, one more person from a public sector organization, from public sector bank, so to say, we have had is Dr. Anil Khandelwal, who was a guest, uh, you know, who again led the transformation story. So uh, this time again, friends, we have someone, um, I think we in India, we got to know about him much later. But once we got to know about him and the kind of accomplishments that he has had, uh it's it's been amazing it's been something that stands out in the context of railways not only in india but by world standards it stands out uh so uh friends i'm talking of mr sudan sumani our guest for uh this session a very warm welcome to you mr money thank you very much thank you very much for inviting me uh, on behalf of all of the participants, uh, many of whom are friends, I see them uh, in most of the sessions. Uh, so to tell you briefly about Mr. Mani, of course, by now he's a household name, uh, I have to say, yeah. <laughs> thanks to his prolific uh, sharing of, uh, you know, of late about the work he has done. But I think until Vande Bharat rolled out, uh, not many of us uh, knew about him. And as you know, the purpose of these conversational sessions is to draw out a little bit of the person, the professional, and of course, uh, uh, what all went into making of this outstanding leader. So to tell you a little bit more than what uh, people know, I think this money, in that sense, belongs to the old school that you join an organization and retire there. Um, but only the difference is he has pretty much done everything in terms of significant roles that are available in Indian Railways. So his association with Indian Railways began good 47 plus years ago. Is that right? Number, uh, is that correct? Ah, uh, well, so... No, 76 is when I joined uh, Jamalpur for the four-year course. Right, right, right. And 18 is when I retired. So, right. well, it makes us, uh, what does it make it? It makes us uh, actually 42, 43 years. 42, 43 years. Yes, that's right. But I've continued in railways. So, therefore, your railway association is well in terms of exactly. your... Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Add to that the four and a half years or so of retirement. Four years, three months. That's and right. Yes, it does make uh, 47 years. <laughs> That's right. So that's been his association with uh, Indian Railways. And um, like I said, from the in the engineering stream, almost every uh, key role that has been there, uh, you know, I happen to know a little bit about Indian Railways. My in-laws family, uh, you know, has been with the railways. So uh, whether it is divisional railway manager, where you have an end-to-end -end responsibility of running a very large division, everything. And then, of course, subsequently to this, uh, you know, 
overseas assignments, global contracts, uh, you know, commercial aspects of Indian railways. And then uh, finally, an assignment where he really did something that Indian railways possibly had not done in its history of, uh, you know, it's Indian railways is the oldest and the largest in that sense, uh, you know, public sector undertaking or a government enterprise. So the kind of project, uh, 1018, as it was earlier called, and the Vande Bharat project, the, from the concept to commissioning, the kind of work that he did has set the benchmarks, not only in the railways, Indian railways, but if you compare it in terms of time and cost and quality, it matches with the best in the world. So in this, uh, and then now, of course, it's since 2018, uh, you know, his, his activity is there, is there's a book, uh, you know, a sought after book, My Train 18 Story, that is available. Uh, he continues to lead and guide uh, major uh, rail projects. Uh, he has his views on number of national uh, issues uh, that he keeps writing on. And uh, he's an art collector and a promoter. So this is how the current uh, role, you know, in terms of he uses his time. So that in a nutshell is about uh, him. If there's anything important uh, uh, you think I've missed out, I'll be happy to. Not at all, not at all. Okay. I more, yes. All right. So like we begin in these conversations uh, with all our guests, our first question, uh, Mr. Nani, always is that we, means people in general, got to know about Mr. Mani only after Vande Bharat project and Vande Bharat Express became so well known. The kind of uh, project that it is and the kind of accomplishment that it is. So if you reflect in your on your life journey, and uh, you know, in terms of the kind of professional accomplishment that you've had, uh, you know, what are some of the things that have, you know, in your life have shaped you as a person and as a professional that we know as Mr. Money? Okay. So, as you see, uh, as you know. Uh, all of us uh, imbibe certain values uh, in our family life from our parents, uh, our teachers, and so on, and which are more or less, you know, are similar about honesty, integrity, sense of purpose, and so on. So, so I'll not like to go into that. Of course, it was just like a normal childhood, right? Like uh, your audience, I'm sure. But it's a little bit different when you come into your professional life. And uh, I dare say that uh, you live and learn is very true. You join a service or an organization as a very raw person uh, with a misplaced sense of uh, uh, competence also, which would not exist. I see. <laughs> and... Uh, especially in the earlier years and even later, I learned a lot, a lot. In fact, everything I learned, everything I know was from my colleagues or my seniors or my juniors. And uh, I really cannot name them, but I can tell you what all I, what all I picked up as uh, my journey continued in railways. This very early one of my bosses at told me that we all in railways tend to discuss successes, whereas what we should be doing is discuss failures. Mm -hmm. uh, because those failures really are the stepping stones to success, which we mm -hmm. ignore. And that's why we run after a success which doesn't come so easily. Profound words, which I, which I found very useful. Mm -hmm. Then one of my seniors, as I just joined the service, uh, he we went to meet him mm. and he said, have you met that such and such person? I said, yes, we did. He said, what did he say? So hesitatingly, we said, okay, this gentleman was saying that, <laughs> so this gentleman was already you know, 20, 25 years in service. And I, this gentleman we had gone to, he said, 
See, if you go for gambling, Will you listen to somebody who has a broken tooth and a torn shirt and he's advising you where to gamble? <laughs> so this gentleman is telling you where he came from, but what are you doing in 25 years? So don't listen to such Don't listen to such people. So uh, well, the lesson there was, uh, Mrs. Solanki, very simple, that uh, we must learn to make the best of what we have and Never crib because that's what starts negativity. You will have options in life. You can take them. Mm. But whatever you do, cribbing will take the soul of your happiness in your work. Then we learned that uh, railways being government is a very feudal organization. and We all tend to shine in the reflected glory of the chair. Mm -hmm. Whereas our job is to break the oh, break the protocol and propriety because we are mm -hmm. a free country we are not a colonially governed country and uh, bring in that empathy and do something which will make you shine on your own not mm -hmm. through the reflected glory of that colonial chair mm -hmm. live in the one of the gms taught me once we had a computer room inaugurated mm -hmm. uh, early 80s those days you could build a computer room because of the computer and put an AC there. Mm -hmm. So we put his name on the plaque and he got furious. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't want to live in a stone if the people I govern and if I'm not an example enough to live in the heart of those people who I govern, what would I do by living in the, a mere stone? And no. these were powerful lessons that I no. gathered. No. Then one of my senior, immediate seniors with whom we would sit, you know, and discuss locomotive failures and so on. Right. Uh, I'm still a good friend. He taught me what clear thinking can bring. Common mm -hmm. sense in engineering, he would call it. And it was indeed very common sense. Without much knowledge, application of mind can mm -hmm. simply bring improvements. Mm -hmm. And he also taught me and others that there is no harm in saying you do not know. We pretend to know things we do not, but we are ashamed, ashamed in us accepting it. He said it's mm -hmm. always a okay to say that you do not, mm -hmm. because that's how you will know and contribute to the organization. Mm -hmm. Of course, lessons in honesty and integrity through examples, and especially the older seniors who were nearing retirement or some of them who had retired, he would tell us that you think these are empty words, mm -hmm. but listen to this retired person. And I realize it's beauty today. He says, uh, all that ill-gotten wealth is not going to help you. There's no wealth at all. But mm -hmm. the wealth you accumulate through your honesty and integrity is going to last you your lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, these were, uh, And one last thing I would say is, Always listen to people. You may do what you want, mm -hmm. but listen to everyone. Have that habit. Never dismiss or uh, ridicule something that comes from below. And let me tell you, most of the things that I've been able to do, whatever little, most of it has come through an idea from below. So mm -hmm. this, some of the examples I gave you, I could go on and on, but oh, sure. these are all lessons learned as I navigated my career in railways, none of it is my own, all mm -hmm. learned from somebody. Mm -hmm. But yeah. very powerful, very simple and profound lessons learned from failures a lot more than, you know, you learn from success, maintaining positivity in the face of all kinds of conversations that will go around. Yeah. You know, it's not about the chair that you occupy, but the place you earn in the hearts of people. And, uh, you know, common sense, uh, you know, you know, all of these very profound and no wonder uh, uh, they shaped you in the kind of person that you became in the later years of your career. Um, uh, the second question, actually, in a way, you have uh, answered part of it. But, you know, before you uh, took charge this all important assignment as a head of integral Coach Factory as their general manager. Um, uh, I mean, uh, any more reflections from earlier part of the journey? Go with some of it you have shared in response to uh, the question. Yeah. yeah. 
so uh, as i said when we were we joined service we are raw we make lot of mistakes we are cock sure of things so you <laughs> make mistakes you thinks you have achieved something in the retrospect you find that what you did was not correct all that we'll not go into but since you ask me about my career before joining icf right now well so most of the let's say the most of the leadership positions that i held gave me a great deal of satisfaction because they always do afford you a great platform a great canvas to paint it the way you want uh, unimaginable uh, platform to do things there are 100 mm-hmm. things you can do and you attempt a 10 maybe you succeed in four or five so i'll give an example so this this train 18 vande bharat you know became it had far reaching impact because it had great visibility it was a train waiting for 20 30 years to come and we didn't know we were doing something that big i see uh, the reception we got from people traveling people non traveling people the prime minister of india <laughs> it was not something we had ever imagined would happen but uh, equally important for example the most powerful diesel locomotive mm-hmm. uh in my stint as executive director in rdso lucknow in a collaborative project with leadership with rdso dlw what has become blw now diesel locomotive works and emd of usa we designed a 5500 horsepower locomotive in india it was really a work horse uh i led that project and it gave me immense satisfaction but then a diesel locomotive or any locomotive for that matter is not going to give that visibility because it it's basically for freight trains and it's only something that could be known among railway circles uh i'll give another very two simple example very close to my heart so sure, sure. which a railway man would never talk uh and i i don't know if somebody is there from bangalore in your audience but i was the divisional railway manager and in this image like this image of an indian railway train that box type train always mm-hmm. stuck right from my childhood and we designed this train and manufactured it one of the images also stuck in my mind was the way the porters whom we call because the britishers taught us we call them coolies mm. we are not even ashamed even i call them coolie look at the term that we use again for fellow indians coolies mm. and we bargained with them they said these people cheat us and okay may they may perhaps charge you a little more than whatever railways specified but the thing is with trolleys and so on their livelihood is dropping badly in sikandrabad i tried to put in air airport type trolleys on the platform mm-hmm. we purchased some and put them there and these were broken in one week by these porters I because see. it was affecting their livelihood sure then i realized we were trying attempting something which was incorrect mm-hmm. because you we are attacking their livelihood their fellow countrymen so in mm-hmm. bangalore when i was drm i said okay i will not spend railway money i'll get 300 400 trolleys for all stations in bangalore bangalore kant krishna rajpuram uh yashwantpur with csr of companies and mm-hmm. hand over these trolleys to these porters mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it will belong to them they'll charge the same fare same tariff mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they will carry luggage with dignity we will not see a porter carrying three tiers of luggage on his head and with his neck bending and so on is that mm-hmm. something that you can see in a developed country is that something you want to see in a developed india absolutely not we have to think of that so before we think we can become a developed country we have to eliminate these ills sure so happy to say that we were totally able to eliminate head loading mm-hmm. after i left it, it, it the project disappeared in a way it mm-hmm. didn't have that sustainability for whatever reason but it gave me a great satisfaction and i had also told the station superintendent that if i see a porter carrying luggage on his head mm-hmm. you will be responsible mm-hmm. that's the station superintendent and it worked just i gave you a couple of examples but railway railways afford you great great platform to do 
something of your choice it's not as if you go up to beaten path railway to chalegi apne aap chalegi aap aap aao nahi aao itna badhiya system hai wo sab chalti hai apne aap chalti rehti hai there are the things which can make a difference is what you need to do uh, and i to my best of my ability tried to do that in many assignments short it just shows the initiate this must have been somewhere in the middle of the career right this bangalore drm uh see the bangalore thing was 2010 to 2012 mm. so mm. it was little more than after yeah. you know, one yeah. of the middle years uh yeah interesting so you know uh, i i i i just want to share that uh, all the six seven people with whom i've had this conversation one thing that very clearly stands out about all of them that while the people at large come to know about them much later in life when there is something very significant a milestone is achieved but when it comes to their courage of conviction and ability to stand up for them uh, they have always had it and as i speak to you i mean uh you know uh, it is very clearly comes across in some of these uh, positions you took and the initiatives that you took and for the benefit of our uh, audience if i may share you know mr mani was admitted uh, to iit kanpur uh, yes. but then he uh, he got the branch of metallurgical engineering yeah uh, so in a few days he left and he went to uh, he went to rurki because he wanted to do electrical engineering or, or whatever the branch of his choice so uh, anybody else as a, as as a student would have basked in the gl- glory of uh, you know i have got into iit now so that's about the thing uh, but no i have something else that i want to pursue so it was there then and you can see that that courage of conviction uh you know has stayed on at every stage no nice. dr sol ab mr solan ke all correct you here okay uh, i mean i will not assign to myself undue <laughs> undue merit okay. here frankly yeah. uh, metallurgy was not considered a good branch perception right right, and right. those lower in the merit would get metallurgy those higher would get in e- electrical or mechanical or uh, i mean iit those were the two right so in rurki i was getting electrical so i thought let's go to rurki i mean uh, i'll not assign myself the, the merit that i thought what i wanted to pursue it was more about no, i understand pursuit. i understand but i'm saying iit that time was a even now is a very big brand true somebody somebody would say now i am in iit rest is okay we'll see career will come along uh, but yeah so that's that's a part i'm talking true, about true 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 you know, going by what is important uh, from my what appeals to me and things like that and that uh, taking this position that no you will not carry the luggage on head it requires some conviction and certain beliefs and it's interesting that i see it consistently in most of the people whose work later on got to be uh, you know known by much wider uh, set of people because uh, the the platform that they had so uh, i i i just wanted to point out this is something consistent and these are you know, things that uh, you know uh, i at least i find it very interesting uh, to see up close and personal as you speak to uh, you know people people like you thanks so much for sharing so uh, the next one that i wanted to talk and understand is uh, i happened to hear a little bit of your ted talk uh, somewhere and Uh, apparently this role uh, uh, as head of as head of integral coach factory as its general manager is is something that you were also keen to take up is that right yes absolutely i had mean, i had, a, uh, I had a desire to build a good train or a locomotive right so locomotive was couple of factories those were not those were occupied right a uh, integral coach factory for my fortune was vacant mm. along with couple other positions and i requested for a posting in integral coach factory which is a factory you know it's not like a zone not mm. a preferred posting people like to go to zone 
Right. Which is like a fiefdom. As mm. I said, a feudal organization appreciates <laughs> a fiefdom. Oh. So, yeah, it was absolutely a position of my choice, uh, which I was fortunate enough to get. Sure, sure, sure. So while I will continue with my question, but because I can see one, uh, the full name is not there, but K-V-V-A-C. Uh, he has posted a little one. I, I, In case you want to answer. Uh, you Go know, ahead. Uh, why, are we, why we are unable to institutionalize reforms. It's a... Oh, uh, oh yeah. You know, it's a much yeah, wider so, issue. Yeah. Yeah, it's a much wider issue, and uh, uh, it it resolve it uh, needs a commitment from not merely the bureaucrats or the executives, but also uh, from the political bosses, so to because it needs a grassroots level reform. It's a, it mm -hmm. is no shame in saying that it still is a very feudal organization. You keep hearing. Colonial mindset, right. but symbolism is what we are aimed. Mm. We as as a country believe so much in symbolism. Mm. Symbolism to some extent is fine, mm. but mm. that commitment to really transform the culture of an organization mm. has to come from the leadership, both bureaucratic and political. Right. I dare say that's uh, not been the case. And if some chairman railway board gets a tenure of let's say three years, which is mm -hmm. rare, and has a railway minister which just doesn't interfere or supports him. And he has this commitment, it can be done. Otherwise, through symbolism and through various orders here and there, let issuing letters and so on, nothing is going on. Yeah. So that has to be that commitment from the wider set of stakeholders. Uh, so uh, I come to the you know most important part uh, here in this. Uh, I'm sure you have narrated the train 18 story umpteen times, but this is a story that people can't have enough of it now that they know and the way it is shaping up. So in a nutshell, in about uh, you know five seven minutes, ten minutes, if you like. Uh, if you have to share the highlight if with the with the audience, you know you are a wonderful curator as well. So I would I request you to yeah for the of course with the fear of repetition and uh, whatever I I will not be pretentious enough to know that your audience has seen all that. So I'll simply go. <laughs> and of course it's the same story. I mean I can't really change it. The story is simple. Uh, the recall of an Indian railway train in all 60, 70 years, has not changed. Yeah. You see, you, technologies have come, color has changed from red to blue. But if you close your eyes, you look at the same box type train that we have. Mm -hmm. Right from my childhood to all my railway service, I always wondered why we can't have a modern, aesthetically superior, technologically superior, speedier train with such a large pool of engineers that we have in India, such a large country, such a large network of railways. So there was this angst and the dream. So uh, in the end, when I said I wanted ICF and I went there, I had this in my mind that now I come to the biggest, mind you, the biggest factory in the world in terms of number of uh, coaches manufactured. I see. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do something about it, then my dream was a pipe dream. It was not really a dream. Right. Then there was fortune that I got a wonderful team who were also had, if not say, if not more of the same acts, mm -hmm. the core team, engineers, mm -hmm. uh, designers, and so on. That it is all say why a cheese design is the tinker karte are why not something new which the country deserves of our own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a matter of getting sanction. The sanction, the way I got, I will not go into the story, but the, that story tells me and tells everyone something which was told to me by somebody which I learned and he explained to me the difference between pride and humility and vanity. Mm -hmm. So the pride, you know, is always something that enhances you and it makes you look at everyone happily. Mm -hmm. Vanity is something that diminishes you. Mm -hmm. 
you you down you look down upon people then. right so i when i begged the chairman of railway board to give me the sanction because it was not forthcoming mm -hmm. literally begged it i was enhancing my pride because that's what got me the sanction mm -hmm. and i only killed my vanity to be beg him because vanity is something somebody will kill any day for you mm -hmm. better you kill it yourself that's how i got the sanction mm -hmm. after that it was all a matter of exciting this team my job was only to channelize this wood spa the audacity of those icf people to do something on our own uh wherever we were lacking we would engage consultant but we will not go to any company mm -hmm. it will be a product with complete ipr with integral coach factory complete ipr with indian railways it would not be world class i mean even now people call it world class i don't it, i we would try to make it near world class and in our second attempt third attempt we would be, we be reaching world class we have we have yet to reach there but it would be near world class and to make sure that the train goes out before i retire so that nobody comes and abandons the project mm -hmm. we will do something which was not done earlier that is from start to finish by burning our midnight oil mm -hmm. by really giving our 110 120% with pride and ownership killing your vanity work with pride and ownership we would do something which has not been done earlier mm -hmm. that's why we called it train 18 in 2017 we began work and we wanted the train to go out in 2018 calendar year so in in april of 17 we called the project train 18 i see rest was just a story of lot of synergy hitches glitches disappointment but daily solutions and uh, fortune favors the brave we were actually able to turn out the train in october of 2018 precisely in 18 months living up to its name once again mm -hmm. and rest is as uh, i can rather pretentious pretentiously say that rest is its history but that was it and in a great grand ceremony the train was un unveiled and turned out in october of 2018 an entire icf and their mm -hmm. families for the first time in the factory turned up with all that excitement because they looked at this product as of not a borrowed technology but a technology entirely created by indians for india that briefly is the story and from then on the story as you know has gone on uh, i would say i dare say without fear of exaggeration as as uh, become a baby of the prime minister the yes. prime minister has been launching each and every train and with the prime minister taking such notice mm -hmm. as a symbol as he says of aspirational resurgent india the rest of the minions have to follow and that's why now large number of trains are all coming out we already have 10 and today only i wrote a, wrote a blog that there is every prospect mm -hmm. that in 4 to 5 years we'll have 500 such trains Nice. it will transform the very face of passenger travel in india it will start resembling what can be truly the passenger travel experience of a developed country we would be preparing for india to be a developed country and this would be our input wonderful uh, is uh, i've heard it bits and pieces but always inspiring to hear this um you know uh, Uh, it's very it's very uh, very very encouraging to hear that everyone in the team how large was the team <laughs> that worked on it if you put everybody together how did i put them together how large well every that i have written in my book that team kind of selected itself i see uh, so as a leader it's your job to identify the people who have that fire mm. so i was to some extent spoiled for choice there okay. were many of them mm. there were many of them which was as i said was fortune and it was not just excitement uh, that fervor to do something it there was question of competence also sure 
so as i have written in my book that it like an oyster borrowing from shakespeare you have to peel it mm-hmm. to understand the organization and people better so right. we did spend 2 3 months doing that mm-hmm. and uh, we were able to identify the core team and a great team as i said because looking back if i'm told to change one member from that core team mm-hmm. i would not like to change one i see mm-hmm. so you can imagine the kind of trust i could have in them and the kind of confidence they gave the leader that is me that 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 was the fortune part mm-hmm. this is uh, amazing mm-hmm. and uh, in, a, in a way also very encouraging that you just need someone to trigger that uh, spark in people people are waiting for opportunities like Absolutely. you said like you there were many who were keen to do something absolutely absolutely, absolutely. encouraging uh, and it just yeah. shows that i consider myself so fortunate that i got this leadership position mm-hmm. there are many i know who have mm-hmm. more fire than i have but mm-hmm. they don't reach that top leadership position and many of their dreams are remain unfulfilled because they don't get that kind of a wide platform right mm-hmm. and there are many of them uh, so that's that's a, mm-hmm. a drawback of the system but anyway you know what you say is totally correct i mean absolutely people with great fire to do something yeah and then you were able to beautifully channel it and uh, you know in in the in this context of course the other aspect i wanted to explore becomes little irrelevant because you know even though railway like you said is a very well run organization but 18 months to complete this kind of a new type of a project of this scale is some kind of a uh, some kind of a demand and to to have everyone willingly burning the midnight oil is is, a, is an act of leadership and sustaining that for 18 months okay so you are right you see the this most people the i describe are so self motivated they they all they need is a pat on the back mm-hmm. what puts them down mm-hmm. especially in a government system is when they see impunity for those who don't work uh, uh, and there is a large number of people who only watch that I mean, right. 2% don't even come to the factory mm-hmm. and earn their salaries 70% watch ki yeah, is there a punishment for not working is there a prim- is there a, a premium for working mm. that was very clear so i didn't need to excite these self motivated ones i just needed to show them that mm. those who don't work don't deserve love they need only one thing boot <laughs> and when i say boot mm. i mean the boot Mm. it's a, it's easier in government to check out people and like the popular belief if you mm-hmm. make up your mind government provides you wonderful system to throw out people mm-hmm. it's just that you don't want to do it so i mm-hmm. passed an illegal order that like once you have charged somebody the only punishment he is going to get is removal from service nothing else no other punishment I, if, if if there is a scope to give him some other punishment then don't punish him at all Mm-hmm. keep him after counseling you don't want a disgruntled person in your organize you mm-hmm. punish somebody with stoppage of increment uh, reversion or something and keep it with you is totally meaningless throw mm-hmm. him out or keep him keep him as a willing member of the team after counseling don't punish mm-hmm. him we were able to do that in uh, my two and a half years we threw out we sacked mm-hmm. 165 people Oh, okay okay yes mm-hmm. and and my one of my jobs was to see actually like mm-hmm. a chaser whether mm-hmm. all these penalties are being imposed or not and by mistake somebody is giving less punishment than actual removal or dismissal from service mm-hmm. this was only to set an example that there is a punishment for not working whereas government system does not allow me to give give premium to those who work i can give them a pat on the back and also as the service to their uh, hutspa their commitment i am going to show them that this these kind of people deserve this you know you have to show your poison 
before you show your love. You have you you must show your love first, and then the poison. There is a poet which has said, "Kama shobati us gujang ko jiske pas karal ho." The the spirit of excusing somebody mercy mm-hmm. is good for only that person which has poison. Gujang mm-hmm. means snake. A poisonless snake deserves no respect. Mm-hmm. I get it, and I particularly I love this idea that if you think he deserves a punishment, really. let him be out of the system absolutely uh, what's the point then, of punishing somebody and keeping him with you you right. think he's going is 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 there with a the grouse right is a human being yes so as an administrator don't keep him throw me or throw him out or don't mm-hmm. punish him reform yes and that that's the second part i was coming to that if it is anything if the punishment is anything less than removal then retain him and the find a way to groom him as a good person yes yes and and don't punish him at all yes not mm-hmm. even the slightest punishment correct i think this is a powerful thinking that why have a disgruntled element in our system by a suspension yeah. or an increment i think there's a lot Absolutely. to learn in this for for the leader if if he deserves anything less than uh, termination then work with him and make him a productive member uh, so Absolutely. this is amazing uh, mr mani i i i hear somebody's curiosity is getting better of him so he says was there no pressure from unions when you sacked people actually uh, well i'm not saying that it's always uh, very very friendly with unions but unions also have you know people forget that unions have a role you may pretend to be very close to the workers and so on but they are the bridge that respect the unions must get Mm-hmm. my my narrative my discourse with the unions was very simple mm-hmm. 12000 workers which i was trying to reduce we brought it down to nearly 10000 but each and every worker any problem collective or individual you are free to come to me nobody in between i will personally see to it that if it is within my competence i'll solve it just about anything related to work factory there is nothing that is going to be dismissed mm-hmm. but in respect of discipline in respect of uh, reducing manpower for example i said nobody is going to work more than 4 5 hours you know a government worker works that much I, mm-hmm. i'll be a fool i'll be a fool to say that they work 8 hours they don't mm-hmm. it is those who don't come to the factories i'm going to tackle these fellows i'm not i'm, I'm not uh, powerful enough to make them work 8 hours let's be mm-hmm. very simple so i say uh, so don't talk to me about these people who indulge in discipline and don't talk to me about getting new people as people retire because i am here to look after every person which is in icf at present i am not going to look after people who are yet to come mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. these things work and uh, sincerity mm-hmm. also work so mm-hmm. we assign more uh, you know some kind of uh, Uh, unreasonable behavior from unions is what we assign to them, but it's usually unreasonable from both sides, management mm-hmm. as well as union. Sure, sure. But how were your, with all of this, how were your terms with the union? No, I had uh, reasonable, very good terms. Mm-hmm. I, I would, I would like to think I had very good terms because mm-hmm. uh, there was no unrest in all the. Uh, Twenty-nine mm-hmm. months that I was there, there was no unrest at all. Uh, there was no stoppage of work. Mm-hmm. Occasional representation and regular meetings with unions, of course, uh, but no unrest. I think another, you know, uh, example of how you could maintain those kind of relations in spite of having taken the view that if. we need less people we need less people and and reducing people where required termination so it's a terrific communication and relationship management that i will take tough action when i need to take but i mean well for you i mean it's uh, it's amazing uh, really wonderful uh, you know for example i'll tell you any buddy who's guilty of 
any sexual harassment of a woman employee. 15 to 20, 15, 17% were women employees. I said, I don't believe in these inquiries which government tells me to do. Because I don't want to subject the lady to that horror once again through inquiry, deposition, and so on. All I need to do is once I learn of it, I don't want any written complaint. I don't want any, anything from that lady. All I need is to mm. determine whether the complaint is genuine. Mm. Mm. And if the complaint is genuine, the government of India has given me the power, not to me, every officer, right. to record that an inquiry is not possible in this case because of this, this reason, where I would write, because I don't want to subject the lady to that horror of this case. Mm. I will not hold an inquiry. Let the gentleman go to court. I am sacking him today. In one day. We sacked four people the same day. Mm. Imagine the message that would have gone to our lady employees. Mm. But here is a leadership which mm. truly cares. And uh, any organization is not going anywhere unless it respects its women employees so, as complete equals. It's not a matter of cliche. It's a matter of belief which they must have. Sure, 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 absolutely. So that, of course, is uh, given, uh, uh, Ms. Mani. I'm, what I find equally <laughs> amazing is that with right communication, in spite of taking such decisive firm actions, it is possible to maintain very harmonious relationships with unions. It is possible to help them see your point of view uh, that, that why these tough actions are necessary. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I made them my partners. I used to. Then you have to shed all protocol, all propriety. Mm -hmm. You should start believing that you are one of them, not somebody mm -hmm. says. I used to go to the colonies. I couldn't speak Tamil, but I would talk to ladies all day. You know, as to what they wanted in colonies, this and that. What are you, what an interaction mm -hmm. without any security or anything. Absolutely. And you know, wonderful days intermixing. And these signs were being seen by the unions after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they became a part of the exercise, not somebody as an opponent. Sure, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> amazing, amazing act of leadership there, absolutely. Uh, so now, Vande Bharat, like you said, is uh, train after trains are being rolled out. So if you have to kind of talk about its prospect in India, given the infrastructure uh, and the possibility, yeah. what would you say? Yeah, so today only I wrote something changing my narrative. And, 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 and if you make a mistake, it's, it's no point, uh, no harm in accepting it. So all this time I had this angst again. Why is this train so much? There is no infrastructure. 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 So Mercedes is running on a rural road. But these are obvious questions, so I didn't have an answer. Infrastructure is not coming up or coming up very slowly. Hmm. I thought about it again. I mean, these are obvious questions with the Prime Minister and others also know. But still, there's so much of trust on new trains. I would say not that much on infrastructure. So while infrastructure must improve, mm -hmm. I would think that the belief is that India is being made future ready as... Uh, high end train mover on its rails. Mm -hmm. So that part, once I look at that part, I absolutely think it is totally because of the Prime Minister's trust. No other reason, absolutely. Had we made two trains, by this time those trains would have gone in oblivion had the Prime Minister not taken notice. Why do you? Sure. So entirely to the credit of the Prime Minister right. himself that as I said, in the next four to five years, we are going to have 400 to 500 such trains. You can imagine the picture of it. Now, I'm not of an elitist view that this is what, this is one part. Mm -hmm. We have to look after the common man as well. And mm -hmm. more and needs to be done there. I am a votary of saying that non-air-conditioned coaches should be stopped. Mm -hmm. India's climate is such that we should run only air-conditioned trains. So you would say, that, okay, the common man cannot afford it. Then it is our job to make it affordable. Mm -hmm. It's not, we have no choice. If we have to become a developed country, you cannot carry people like sardines like you do today. Mm -hmm. Period. So you mm -hmm. have to see everybody traveling in comfort, maybe cramped, 
but everybody with a seat, nobody standing, with mm. comfort, and then decide how is it being, how can it be made possible? That it has to happen as well. Mm. It can be made possible in many ways. Mm. You manufacture more, bring down the, uh, don't let the fare go up. India moving towards a developed country means, let's say, a $20 trillion economy mm. in real terms. More money in people's pocket, maybe three to times more, so they'll be able to afford it. Look at it from that point of view. But that, everyone must travel with comfort is not something that we can negate. Mm. We cannot say, the poor people don't pay much, so I'll carry them like sardines. No. Then you will remain what you are. Beautifully said. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Very well said. Uh, this is, yeah, you know, that's why, uh, you know, your work at every stage, uh, you know, in that sense, stands out. So, uh, you've been sharing the nuggets, if I may say, uh, on, on leadership per se, and what helped you, uh, you know, kind of, Accomplish, accomplishments that you were able to have. Uh, you know, in whether it's a corporate sector or e even more so the public sector, uh, people talk of all kind of, many people say that, you know, the initiative gets stifled, you know, support is not there and, and all of that. So here is Mr. Money who was part of a, the largest, Indian Railway is the largest public sector outfit and, uh, uh, and a legacy organization, you know, with all kinds of legacy. Uh, Mr. Solanki, it's not even public sector, it's government. Uh, sure, government. <laughs> which is worse, which is worse than a public sector. Sure, sure. It directly under government, so to say. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you can imagine the constraints and uh, then you see what Mr. Mani continued doing all along, right from his days as a divisional railway manager and maybe even earlier and then, of course, subsequently. So, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Mani, uh, uh, we have audience, we have a professor there, Professor Salaja, we have many uh, senior HR folks here and some younger ones, uh, you know, reflect on your journey and you know, say a few things that come to your mind that okay. Okay, so, with all of uh, these constraints, yeah. you know, how is it that one can still do at yeah. least some of what you did? Yeah, so I will give you, uh, I'm sorry, I have to leave at 6.30. That's right. Uh, but yeah. I will give two very simple messages. And right. these are cliches, but I have strongly believed in them because somebody gave it to me, one of my seniors, a couple right. of my seniors even my juniors and colleagues, and I found it really works. So I'll say just two things. And uh, I always uh, say them uh, through poetry. One is, of course, we have large concern, but we forget. It's a big circle of concern, but we forget that small dot of our influence. Mm. We should look at what we can do instead of all the things which should be done. Even Modi ji does not have that big a circle sure. to do everything. Yeah. So, Shikwa is Zulmat Shab se kahi better tha. Shikwa complained Zulmat darkness, Shab evening. Shikwa is Zulmat Shab se kahi better tha ki apne hisse ki ek shama jala pe jate. And the second thing is what the People's President APJ Abdul Kalam has said. Wonderful words. That is, a dream is not something that you see in sleep. Hmm. A dream is that thing that does not let you sleep. Wow. When does should that happen? Well, the president didn't say, but I'm sure he, he meant that. Right. Don't chase your dream and look after your bread and butter. It's important. But don't let your dream die. Let mm -hmm. it linger. Don't let it be extinguished. You never know when the opportunity will present to you for you to realize your dream. And that's the time that that dream should not let you sleep. And these are some of the mantras I would like to share, which I have got from somebody. They're not mine. Sure, sure. And with these words, I'm very thankful, uh, Mr. Solanki. I'm sorry, I would have liked to spend some more time, but somebody is waiting downstairs to pick me uh, up he, at 6.30. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. With your permission, with uh, one caveat that I'm not desert, I mean, abandoning anything. Any questions that come to you through LinkedIn or otherwise, I'll be glad to answer them. 
and uh, thank you everyone and with your permission i would like to leave now uh, yes you have to go you have to go but thank you so much from the bottom of my, my heart pleasure. on behalf of each one of them you can see them clapping and uh, you know many more accomplishments ahead uh, mr mani thank you my so pleasure. much indeed my thank pleasure you. thank you thank you everyone thank you so much thank you